What was your biggest, we need to leave now, moment? Story one, my father's story. In 1999, three adult males entered our family store in July, wearing heavy trench coats. They spread out through the store and my father caught a glimpse of a gun under their coats. He called the police and while waiting for a call back, my mother grabbed the children and ran out the back door. Once we got a call back, an employee answered the phone and asked to call the police. The man ran out of the store, went down two doors, robbed the laundromat. Story 2. Driving to Disney with Hubs and two little kids, four and five, stopped at a gas station in Tifton, Georgia at about 10 p.m. Wander in, a little bleary-eyed with the two kids looking for the bathroom. Clerk looks at me funny and points. While I'm in there, I hear, she got two babies with her man. Just let them pee and go. I grab both kids and walk straight back to the car with only a small head nod to the clerk. Hubs was done pumping gas and about to go in himself. I yelled for everyone to get in the car. I would explain later. As soon as we pulled out, I called 911. The operator told me they were already en route and to vacate the scene. Took my info and wished us a fun trip. Walked into a gas station robbery with two little kids. Peed and left with no issues. Bad guy wasn't that bad of a guy and let us go. Story 3. I was at a club and a guy pulled up and parked next to us as we were getting out to head in. The guy then proceeded to reach in the back of his SUV and pull out a shotgun. He looked over at us and told us, It's finna go down. We got back in our vehicle and noped out. Homeboy did you a solid. Story 4. Probably two months after my wedding, I invited my then best friend, maid of honor, to a party my husband and I were going. She agreed. Sometime into it, I'm drunk and in the pool. And my husband swims out to me to tell me she just asked him to sleep with her. I have never sobered up or left somewhere so fast. Story 5. Visiting Kowloon in Hong Kong. I ended up walking all day until my feet were killing me. It got dark outside and I was tired. So I decided to drop by a decent looking bar for a drink and a moment to rest my feet. It was all empty, except a group of serious looking local men in suits. They kept leering at me the whole time. The most awkward beer I've ever had. None of them said a word, but I got the message. You're not supposed to be here, Guaylo. Story 6. My car was stolen the very night I moved into my new house in a very good neighborhood. The neighbors had warned us that the neighborhood was being targeted at the time. They mentioned a woman around the corner that opened the door for knockers in the middle of the night and robbed her and injuring her in the process. We had reported the car stolen and did the police reports when it happened. Well, two nights later in the middle of the night, I hear a knock on the door and they said, open up, it's the police. Since I had heard the story about the other lady, I was suspicious and did not answer. I grabbed my kids and put them in my daughter's room because it had access to the roof from the window. I called the police to say the two men claiming to be police were pounding on my door. They said there were no police in the area. They were sending a car. Turns out these same guys stole the car and came back for seconds. I did get my car back because they brought it with them. How nice of them. Hope they brought it back with a full tank of gas too. Story 7. When I was a paramedic, I was in a basement taking care of a shooting victim. The fire department had not arrived yet. The cop, having cleared the basement, was not with me at the time and my partner was in the ambulance getting some equipment I needed. As I was kneeling down working on my patient with 100% focus, I felt a hard steel object placed in the back of my head. It was a firearm. The shooter was apparently still in the basement and I was alone with him. He told me he shot this guy for a reason and gave me an opportunity to leave. I left. Just a quick side note, if you like our content and love listening to our stories, please press the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you'll see more of our content. Thank you so much and now back to the stories. Story 8. Late afternoon in the summer, I'm waiting at the bus station near my house. Most businesses are closed. Not a lot of cars in the street. Guy passes in front of me. He passes again two minutes later watching me suspiciously. Alarms start to go in my head screaming to me that I need to leave and get the f*** off here. But I ignore it since the bus will come in ten minutes. Third time he passes he charges to me, pushing me to the wall. I freeze for some seconds then start punching and kicking him. I manage to get away and the rest is history. Yeah, trust your gut guys. Story 9. When I was 15, a friend and I went for a lot of walks around town, small town, around five to 6,000 people. We were going to the cyber cafe in town to meet a few friends, and we often took different streets to get places, just to keep it interesting. We were about to go to Main Street off of one of the side streets, and a man on a bicycle approached us. He got off his bike and asked us a couple small talk questions. Something didn't seem right about him. He was probably mid-40s. We both kept inching away but didn't want to come off as too rude, so we answered about the weather or traffic. Then he paused and we said we had to go. And he said, and I'll never forget it. You look so young. I don't want to get in trouble, but I need someone. I just need you. You should come with me. And he started rambling. I just felt terror. Couldn't even speak. I grabbed my friend's hand and turned. We sprinted the rest of the way to the cafe. And as soon as we were inside, we asked to use the phone. I called my mom to pick us up while my friend told the worker what happened and what the guy looked like. A month later, I got my first cell phone. Story 10. Girls camp, my last year. Me and a small group of girls wanted to climb to the top of this big hill that has a beautiful lookout above the trees and clear view of the sky. 
It was a new moon and zero light pollution. We grabbed our flashlights and got on the trail. About three-fourths of the way up, the two girls leading us stopped dead in their tracks at the same time. One whispered to the other, Do you feel that? I was right behind them and heard what they said. I looked up and around. I didn't see anything. But something in the air made the hair on my neck stand on end. It was just too quiet. I started to feel very vulnerable and scared. One of the girls in front turned and said, We need to go back. Don't run. One girl asked, Why not run? And they said, So you don't trip. Valid reason, but I don't believe it was the real reason she said it. Nature goes quiet when there's a predator nearby. Story 11. My friends and I stopped at a 7-Eleven around midnight in a sketchy neighborhood. We'd taken a wrong turn and were trying to find our way back to the highway. Two police officers were getting coffee and donuts. A group of local youths came in, kind of roughly messing with each other. The police officers looked at them, looked at us, looked at each other, and power walked out of the store. My friends and I decided not to complete our snack food purchases and made to leave. And then one of the youths yelled to his friends that we'd call him a racial epithet when we hadn't even spoken to them. I'm glad my car started in the first try. And glad no one was coming the other way as I ran a couple stop signs. Yeah, when the cops say, nope, let's get the heck out of here. You know that's a good cue to also leave. Story 12. I was in a school play when I was about 12 or 13. This was one of the rare opportunities I got to be in school after it had closed, so I took the chance to have a walk around the empty rooms while the other kids and teachers were all in the main hall. It was about 7 p.m. At the back of the school was a bunch of temporary classrooms, all in darkness, so I wandered in. The temp classrooms had a storeroom that joined the classrooms together. It was only small with nothing but the usual classroom equipment in. From out of this storeroom came my English teacher. Now the class and storeroom are in darkness. I know he shouldn't be there and I'm pretty sure he shouldn't either. Strangely, he doesn't act surprised at all. And in fact, beckons me over and tells me he has something he wants to show me in the storeroom. It all just felt wrong. As soon as he disappeared back into the storeroom, I ran as fast as my legs could go. Imagine if the guy had a console set up back there and a bunch of other kids were playing Mario Kart. Story 13. We were playing hoops in a bad neighborhood. At some point, one of the guys we were playing with got real nasty. Why do boys leave now? We ain't messing with you. You need to leave. Real aggressive, etc. I had noticed a black BMW circling around the playground, but nothing much else. All his friends started insulting us and pushing us, etc. Which was weird since we were playing with them every weekend. I had given free tutoring classes to one of their brothers. We left, pissed, that was a good playground, and it felt special to play with him. Us being white nerdy boys. Well, 15 minutes after we left, the black BMW shot at them. Multiple casualties, etc. Story 14. The owner of a Mexican restaurant threw two young farm workers at the bar out to the parking lot. They were drunk as monkeys and proceeded to try to fight, but mostly just leaned on each other. All in front of the picture window while the place was full of people. The one runs to his trucks, burns rubber out of there. I said, time to go, honey. She says, what? I'm not going to be here when the shooting starts. We left. It started not long after. Story 15. I work as an engineer in a data center cooling plant. We're responsible for basically everything in the building. Mechanical, electrical, HVAC, plumbing. So the engineer I'm relieving tells me there's an odd sound coming from the con ad vaults. This is where these huge transformers are that step down from 26,000 volts or so to a voltage the building can actually use. We are not allowed in those vaults. They're locked and only con ad has the key. So he leaves and I take a walk by the vaults. I had never actually heard electricity arcing through the air before, but I knew I was hearing it then. I called Con Ed's emergency line and told them to get out there ASAP. A crew of two guys show up. They seem calm and disinterested in the elevator on the way up. It's probably just a contact chattering, they said. We got off the elevator and start heading down the hall. The sound was way louder now. We weren't even near the vaults and there was no mistaking it. Both guys stopped dead in their tracks and kind of hunkered down. I saw the color drain from them. Wasted no time getting back in that elevator. If you've never seen a video of a large transformer explosion, go check YouTube. These transformers are not like the ones you see up on utility poles. They're as big as a couple of trucks stacked on top of each other. Anyone on the floor when one of them cooked off would be gone. And we have eight of them. Story 16. Sknilev Air Show Catastrophe. I was five-ish at the time, so it's my dad's story more than mine. You can Google the details, but long story short, my dad saw the plane jolt in the air, and he realized that something went wrong and started running and yelling at everyone else to run. I was sitting on his shoulder, so he just took off with me. The plane crashed into the crowd, taking the lives of 77 people, 35 or so children among them, not us. Story 17. I was a teenager and my male neighbor hired my preteen sister and I to clean his apartment. I was in the middle of doing the dishes when the guy started rambling about how he didn't want to hurt us, but he had a good 12 inches. He told my sister we had to go now, and she argued that we were not done and wouldn't get paid. I convinced her to leave and we ran home where I told my dad what happened. Dad went and talked to the guy. I don't know what transpired between them, but later, the neighbor guy comes over with a black eye, apologized, and paid us. Good on ya, dad. Story 18. New Year's Eve in Moscow. 
I, dark-haired brown man, was drinking with my significant other, blonde white woman, in a bar getting friendly with some locals who tried their best to speak English. So friendly that one of them gave us a matryoshka doll that he was going to give to his mother later that night. They seemed a little too friendly, and maybe they just were. But at one point, I went to order more drinks and the bartender, who had been watching and serving us, gave me a stern look and said, You should leave. Now. I found this a little strange and unexpected, so naturally tried to question what he meant. But his face was drop-dead serious. He looked at the friendly group, then at my girlfriend, then to me, and repeated his words. I didn't really want to take any chances in Russia, and wanted to see another local bar anyway, so I grabbed my girl, the doll, and promptly left. Story 19. I was on a date with a girl hiking a trail system that I knew like the back of my hand. Something felt weird, but I shook it. We went in around sunset. We were going to swim in one of the deep pools in the creek. Maybe two miles into the trail, I get the feeling again, and she's talking her head off, but I was just listening to everything around me. I told her to stop talking, and she looked at me very concerned. I just put my finger to my lips and listened. I heard something familiar, but I couldn't place it. We never stopped walking. We came to the arroyo just before the creek pool, and I heard it again. By this time, I knew. I told her we were going to walk to the clearing where the arroyo was at and turn around. She told me she heard something weird. As we came to the clearing, we stood there like statues. Dead silent. Her nails caught my arm from gripping it so hard. Then around 15 feet from us, the biggest mountain lion I've ever seen crossed the clearing with two of its young. She looked at us, and as her eyes met, my soul left my body. I felt her grip tighten around my arm even tighter. She stopped and so did her babies. I'm guessing she sized us up, but then kept going. The babies kept turning around to look at us, but ultimately they just slowly crossed the top of the hill and that was that. We turned around and told everyone we saw on the way there there were three mountain lions in the trail. They all turned around and left. That was the first time I was ever scared out in nature. I didn't have a firearm on me. I had been there a hundred times. She told me the sound she heard was a deep purring, and that was what I kept hearing also. I just hadn't put it together. Story 20. My friends and I, all preteen boys, were walking around the neighborhood. A white van with a mountainscape mural with wolves howling at the moon kept slowly following us. Eventually, we caught on after a few blocks and started to get anxious. We didn't run, but slowly walked up to a random door, very family-centric neighborhood, and then started loudly knocking. The van peeled off, never to be seen again. Story 21. I was 15 at the time. I took about 10 of my little cousins with me to the park. Three of my older cousins, but still younger than me or the same age, came with me to help. As I approached the park, there was a man and two other kids there. He came up to me and started talking to me. I tried to give him the hint that I didn't want to talk, but he kept going. I asked him, Oh, did you bring your kids with you? He nodded and kept talking, then asked me weird questions like, Are you married? Are those your kids? How old are you? I lied about my name and age and tried to walk away, and he said, I like you. Want to sit with me and talk? I said I had something important to tell my family first, and I joined him after. I smiled and went up to one of my older cousins and said, Pretend everything is okay, but we need to leave now. She nodded, and I watched as the two kids left without the man, so we started walking home again, and I made sure he didn't follow or watch where we went. I later found out that he had picked up one of my little cousins and put him down again, and one of my cousins saw, but she froze and didn't say anything to me. Luckily, one of us saw him walk into a house, and so he called the police. Story 22. I was at a house party, and the people hosting were aggressively telling people to have a good time and go to the basement, like with a scary tone and a smile. Most of my friends left right away. The one person who wanted to stay ended up getting mugged. Story 23. Years ago, my boyfriend owned a truck tire repair company. He stopped by a customer's house unannounced one day to try to get a check, as they owed a lot of money. When he came out to the house, he was pretty shaken up. He explained the man's numerous other brothers were there, unusual. Everyone was very jittery, but they cut him a check and then rushed him out. He had a scary feeling that day. Two days later, that customer and his brothers were arrested for homicide that they had committed the night before he stopped by. Story 24. When I was hiking in the woods and I saw a baby bear, I slowly turned and walked quickly away from the bear, because I'm not getting eaten. I had to drag my friend along with me because he didn't understand why we needed to return the way we came from. Story 25. I was walking in my old local park with my sister. We entered at about 3 p.m. and were hanging around until about 9 to 9.30. We saw three people all wearing somewhat similar outfits all the way on the other side of the park. I immediately noticed but didn't think much of it. We walked for about two more minutes and I noticed one of them stopped and was staring at us. I immediately had a bad feeling and told my sister we should leave. She noticed and obliged. Later that night, there was word of a stabbing in the park and the suspects were all the people we saw in the group of three. Story 26 was riding my bike home from a friend's house when I was a young teen, over 20 years ago. We had both lost track of time, so it was dusk when I left. Lived about a mile away. Was traveling down one of the last roads to get home when I had this weird feeling. So I turned around to look back down the road. Saw headlights pass, stop, back up, and turn on the road I was on. It was a pretty long road without many houses and no streetlights or anything. As soon as they turned, I bolted into the woods and hid pretty far in. 
car slowly drove by and kept going. No idea what they were doing, but I didn't want anything to do with it. Story 27. I was camping with a friend in a backwoods camping area. Not very many sites, and they were all super spaced out. We had already been there one night, had the site fully set up, we had been hiking all day, the works. We drove into town to get some food. And when we were driving back to our secluded campsite, we passed a man walking out of the only road to our site. We both locked eyes with him, and I got a super creeped out feeling. He stared at us like he knew us and hated us, but we had never seen him in our lives. When we got to our tent, we went inside and everything we had in there was tossed. Our bags were dumped out and our clothes were thrown everywhere. We quickly realized both our hunting knives were gone, along with a bunch of our clothes. We also realized it had to be that guy we saw. There were no other sides or hiking paths he could have been walking from besides ours. We jumped in the car and drove back towards where we had seen him. He was gone. We drove a bit further and found a common area where other campers were gathered. We sprinted down and asked, Have any of you seen this guy? And described him. The people at the gathering just stared at us and didn't speak giving us an even more creeped out feeling. It was at that point I told my friend, we need to leave this place right now. Walking back to our car, we looked over the edge of a guardrail and saw all our stolen clothes in the woods. We gathered them up, but didn't find either of our knives. Knowing this guy was still out there with those knives and that no one around us cared freaked us out so much. We packed the car up and ended our camping trip early. No way we were staying out in those woods one more night.